Let me tell you, this client is the biggest one we've got. You know what happens if we screw this up, right? Be ready, if you fail. I'll send you far away. We were supposed to have a big business meeting, but I got a sudden message that Mr. Yates, the president, couldn't make it. My boss, Harvey, was supposed to give the presentation in his place, but the moment he realized it was in English. He dumped the responsibility on Michelle, his subordinate. And he even hinted at a transfer if things went south. Um, I, I'm not really good at English. Michelle, pale from the sudden turn of events, pleaded anxiously. Ha! Huh? You're the one who came up with this project, right? So obviously, you're the one responsible. You better take full responsibility for this. When things get tough, he always pushes the burden onto his subordinates and cuts them loose. That's just the kind of guy he is. His blatant passing of the buck left me speechless. I've had enough of this. Don't worry. I'll handle it. I lightly patted her shoulder and stood by her side. Oh. And what could a useless guy like you possibly do? Harvey sneered as he grinned at me. Just watch. You won't be laughing for long. My name is Timothy. I work for a company that manages shopping malls. Technically, I'm in the sales department, but most of my work is just odd jobs and not even at the office out in the field. Can someone take this delivery up to the second floor storage? Passing through the back room, one of the mall's part-timers called out to the other staff. But everyone seemed too busy to help. Um, I can do it. It was before my shift started, so I raised my hand to help. The part-timer looked at me, surprised. Oh, no. It's not your department. I feel bad. It's fine. Just leave this kind of stuff to him. Coincidentally, Harvey happened to be there, mocking me as usual. You're useless anyway, so the least you could do is contribute by doing the heavy lifting. Yes. With no room to argue, I loaded the boxes onto the cart and headed to the elevator. When I got back to the office, Harvey called me over. Hey, Timothy. Where the hell have you been? I've been looking for you. I was delivering some packages. You mean you've been doing that this whole time? How slow can you be? Sorry. The storage room was an absolute disaster. Things had been carelessly tossed everywhere, making a huge mess. I knew it was unnecessary, but I spent extra time organizing it. I decided not to explain, knowing he'd just call me inefficient, so I resigned myself to an apology. At least the part-timer appreciated it. Thanks as always, Timothy. But you know, you should stand up for yourself sometimes. Harvey just takes advantage of your kindness and dumps all the trouble on you. Ha ha. All of us part-timers know you're the best worker here. We've got your back, so be confident. Thanks. She's right. All I have to do is say no. But if I refuse, I'll just get 10 or 100 times the snide remarks in return. Before I knew it, I'd become completely obedient to Harvey's demands. After I apologized, Harvey, seemingly satisfied, motioned for me to come over and introduced me to a woman. This is Michelle, who just transferred to our department today. You're not busy anyway, so show her around and be her mentor. That extra comment was unnecessary, but it wasn't a bad task, so I agreed. The woman standing in front of me was stunning, even in a plain office uniform, and she seemed very intelligent. I wondered if I was really up to the task of mentoring her, but Harvey smirked as he looked at Michelle. Good luck, you two incompetents. He said that and then returned to his desk. Incompetent. 
I thought that comment was directed at me, but what did he mean by you two incompetence? That mystery was solved during our introductions. I've been with the company for five years now, but this is my fourth department transfer. Wait, so you've been moved every year? Yes. According to her, she's been bounced around from one department to another because she couldn't perform well. What was originally a job at headquarters had finally led to her being transferred to this store. How can anyone grow in such an environment? I don't understand what the higher-ups are thinking. I really don't want to be called incompetent, but it's true I haven't been able to do my job well. It's not something you should just accept. The company hired you, so it's their responsibility to provide a proper environment for you to grow. If they can't do that, it's their fault, not yours. Of course, it's unlikely the higher-ups would ever admit that. And I couldn't say much either, not having seen her work firsthand. For now, I decided to give her a tour of the store and explain my department to help her get accustomed to the job. After watching Michelle for a few days, I started to realize that her lack of confidence might be the reason she's been looked down on or transferred. She has ambition, but somewhere inside, she's doubting herself, thinking, can I really do this? That hesitation is making her ideas and opinions come across as half-hearted. It seems like she's unconsciously holding back her true potential. So there we were, once again sent out together to inspect the store's facilities. Checking the fire extinguishers, the elevators, and the escalators. We checked each one, marking them off on the checklist. Timothy, this isn't really our job, is it? Michelle voiced a reasonable question, and I could only respond with a wry smile. Technically, this task falls under the responsibility of the mall store staff. However, this shopping mall, located in a densely populated residential area, is packed with customers every day. The staff in charge of the site are so busy they're practically running in circles, so light tasks like this get passed on to people like me. Or rather, Harvey took on the task to make himself look good to the store staff, then passed it on to us. To keep Michelle's motivation from dropping, I decided to keep that part to myself. Yeah, it's true. But even though it's not our job, it's still important. Plus, look over there. I gestured toward a family of three walking hand in hand. They were smiling, discussing what they should have for lunch. Here, we can see the customers' faces directly. It makes me feel like what we do matters, and that's kind of a nice perk, don't you think? You're right. It's something we wouldn't see if we were stuck in the office. Michelle looked around. Two women picking out clothes together, a couple playing in the arcade. Children with eyes sparkling in front of the toy store. I... I really want to work hard and help bring smiles to people's faces. Unlike when she was handed the checklist, her expression was now full of life. I wanted to help her channel the drive into confidence. And soon, the opportunity came. Michelle and I were selected to be part of a new project team. It was an enormous project, with potential sales of $100 million if successful. I was certain that if we succeeded, Michelle would finally gain the confidence she needed. The only concern I had was, listen up. Now that I'm involved, it's safe to say this project will succeed. But if any of you drag it down and it fails, I'll make sure you're all transferred out. Consider yourselves warned. The fact that Harvey was the leader of this project. Hearing something like that in the very first meeting was enough to make anyone shrink back. Does he not realize that threats won't motivate anyone? Timothy, do you think we'll be okay? He glared at us and said, especially you two don't mess this up. Michelle, completely terrified, looked at me with eyes that were on the verge of tears. Don't worry. 
That's just Harvey trying to cover himself. If something goes wrong, he'll push the blame onto others. That still doesn't sound like we'll be okay. Well, we don't want his pressure to slow us down, so let's not take him too seriously. We'll just focus on doing our job. Okay. Her response lacked confidence, but I couldn't afford to let Harvey hinder her growth. So, I made sure to keep Harvey's involvement to a minimum as Michelle and I proceeded with our work. The project's concept was to simultaneously run events at all our stores nationwide. Each event would feature different shops from other locations, rotating between stores over a set period. We were responsible for planning, evaluating the stores to feature, negotiating deals, and outlining the project details. I wondered why such a massive project had been handed to our store sales department, but it made sense once I found out. Our store had the highest sales in the country, by far. Michelle, maybe they transferred you here so you could gain more hands-on experience, I suggested. But Michelle just looked downcast and said, so basically, I got demoted. She's the type who responds better to tangible actions than words. A half-hearted reassurance wouldn't reach her. Michelle, our job is to come up with the concept. How about we visit other shopping malls for research? Research? Yeah. The company will cover travel expenses, and we can check out both our competitors and other locations. I'm sure we'll come up with some great ideas. When are you free? I can drive us there. As I started listing nearby shopping malls, Michelle giggled. Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh, it just sounds like we're planning a date. Thinking about it, it did seem like that from an outside perspective. Oh, no. That's not what I meant. I know. But this is starting to sound fun. I'll look for some places too. Let's really dig into this. By the way. Yeah. Timothy, your ideas always make so much sense. Your way of thinking and the way you explain things, it's amazing. I don't understand why your performance reviews are so low. Really? You're the only one who's ever said that, Michelle. I brushed off the compliment and steered the conversation back to work. From that point on, we spent our time fully engrossed in research. Even on our days off, I drove us to various shopping malls. We found that even stores under the same brand had unique features depending on the location, with some targeting specific customer demographics, while others offered a broader range of tenants. We gained a lot of valuable insights. Honestly, if it had been just me, I would have simply done what I was told, like always, and stuck to menial tasks. But this time, I was working for Michelle's sake. All I could think about was how to help her. For about a month, we alternated between research and compiling data, working together on the project proposal. I mostly handled the numbers and data analysis, while Michelle put together the actual proposal. It was during this process that I realized her true talent. Michelle, this project proposal. Is there something unclear? Or maybe the layout is off. No, it's incredibly clear. I can't believe you put this together all by yourself. Michelle's proposal was truly easy to understand. It perfectly outlined the research we conducted the thought process behind our ideas, and how they were incorporated into the plan. It detailed the differences between the malls, highlighting each location's strengths, what was missing, and what customers were seeking. The materials were minimal, concise, and captivating. I had never seen such a high-quality proposal before. Did someone in your previous department teach you this? No. I never had the chance to create proposals before. So I put all my effort into it. Her presentation was logical, 
clearly based on what she had seen and experienced firsthand, making the proposal grounded in strong evidence. Michelle must have a high level of sensitivity. That's why she shrinks under criticism, yet is also able to consider others' feelings. It's truly amazing. I don't think it needs any revisions. If you say that, Timothy, it makes me really happy. We finalized the proposal and presented it to the team. We highlighted that the event space at this shopping mall was larger than other locations. We also noted the unexpected number of people resting on the benches. Our specific idea was to hold simple performances in the event space, with different stores rotating each week. We'd set up plenty of chairs so people could watch the shows while taking a break. We planned to invite comedians, musicians, and other performers to rotate between the stores nationwide. For the performers, it would feel like a national tour. The investment would be significant, but the potential revenue was promising. We had observed customer behavior, identified their needs, and compiled a list of performers we wanted to contact. Most of these ideas came from Michelle, and her creativity and keen observation continually surprised me. She had simply never been given the chance to show her talents before. Her proposal was well received, and it was selected to be presented to Mr. Yates, the company president. The next day, Michelle, Harvey, and I were called to Mr. Yates's office at headquarters. At the sales meeting, they decided to move forward with your proposal. Thank you for the excellent work. We'll work out the details and negotiations. But I wanted to update you first. Michelle and I were speechless, hardly believing that results came so quickly. But before we could say anything, Harvey stepped forward. Thank you for your praise. We had many discussions about the direction of the proposal, and it paid off. What a lie. Harvey hadn't paid any attention to our proposal and had kept piling menial tasks on us. The only reason he put Michelle and me on this project was to have us handle extra work when things got busy. He even said so himself, accompanied by his usual snide remarks. But I couldn't ruin the mood by calling him out, so I just stood there, watching Harvey and Mr. Yates chat in high spirits. Michelle's project continued to progress smoothly, and today, we were scheduled to meet with a potential partner, a game company from overseas. They were the creators of a game series hugely popular in Japan, and we planned to have one of the developers host a talk show as part of the event. The online meeting was primarily supposed to be led by Mr. Yates, who would handle the main explanation. We were also participating from the store's office as backup, ready to provide additional details if necessary. Even if the deal didn't go through, a positive response or interest would be considered a win. Ten minutes before the meeting, as we were preparing to join the conference room, Harvey's phone rang. Yes, this is Harvey. What? No, you must be joking, right? Harvey's face grew paler by the second. No way. I understand, we'll handle it. Yes. When he hung up, his expression was grim. I asked who had called, and he said it was Mr. Yates's secretary. Apparently, Mr. Yates suddenly collapsed. At that moment, Michelle, her face even paler than Harvey's, stood up. What? Is he okay? Her hands were trembling, and she seemed genuinely frightened. Of course it's not okay. Mr. Yates was supposed to handle everything. No, I mean, what about Mr. Yates's condition? It was the first time I'd heard Michelle raise her voice like that. Perhaps surprised by her intensity, Harvey responded honestly. Oh, uh, they said his life isn't in danger. Apparently, he was on a business trip earlier, and with this heat, he got heat stroke. He's conscious, but he can't sit up yet. 
Thank goodness. Michelle let out a sigh of relief as she sat down, but now it was Harvey who stood up. Good. This is far from good. The secretary said to handle it ourselves. What are we going to do? We had all the materials at hand. We didn't have the exact script, but since our team developed the project, any one of us could explain it. Naturally, that role should fall to the leader, Harvey. Damn it. Harvey, visibly irritated, reluctantly entered the conference room. Well, he is the leader, so he should be able to handle it. He's been to countless sales meetings and negotiations with other clients, so it should be fine. We joined the meeting, trying to remain calm. However, hello. Michael, our negotiation partner, greeted us cheerfully, but Harvey's face went completely pale. Maybe he forgot the client was a foreigner. After all, every other client until now had been domestic. Hello? Harvey awkwardly responded with a strained smile, then muted his microphone. Michelle, it's your project, so you're going to explain it. Got it? What? Michelle's eyes widened in shock, as did everyone else's. With Mr. Yates out, it's up to you, the project creator, to handle this. And just so you know, this is our biggest client. You understand what happens if you mess this up, right? His blatant attempt to shove responsibility onto her left me speechless. Now that I think about it, I remember hearing that Harvey wasn't good at English. But even so, dumping this on Michelle out of nowhere was absurd. Before Michelle could protest, Harvey clumsily explained in broken English that Mr. Yates was unavailable and that Michelle would present the project in his place. Then turned off his camera. I glanced over at Michelle. She had managed to give a quick greeting and display the materials on the screen. But she hadn't been expected to handle the negotiations herself, so there was no way she could have been prepared for this. Still, she tried her best, glancing between the screen and the documents, clearly struggling to find the right words. Meanwhile, Harvey sat back, smirking at her discomfort. I'd had enough. I was done with Harvey, done with this situation, and done with avoiding responsibility myself. Michelle, it's okay. I'll handle this. I gently patted her shoulder and turned my camera on. Apologies for the interruption. Michelle, the project lead, is feeling under the weather and has a sore throat, so I, Timothy, one of the co-creators, will take over the explanation. I mixed in a little lie to shift the attention to me. Everyone in the meeting room widened their eyes in surprise. Explaining this much in English was no big deal. As we've mentioned, we plan to host long-term events utilizing our event space. With your company's support, I wove together the key points from previous negotiations with the passion we had when we first conceptualized the project. It wasn't difficult just translating everything into English. But for Harvey, who struggled with English, he probably had no idea what I was saying. He stared at me with a dumbfounded expression. Michelle, on the other hand, quickly and efficiently provided the necessary documents next to me, ensuring the presentation flowed smoothly. Even though it was all last minute, we managed to pull it off, thanks to her. The client's representative was American, but their PR representative was from Spain. He spoke fluent English, of course, but to ensure our message was perfectly understood. I addressed him in Spanish while continuing the main presentation in English. Their accountant was German, so I explained the financial details in German, then summarized everything in English for the rest of the team. I kept switching between languages. You're fluent in many languages. It's very clear and easy to follow, he said. Thank you. If anyone has trouble understanding the nuances, please let me know.
I'm happy to speak in whichever language is most comfortable. Several people took me up on the offer, requesting explanations in Chinese, French, and so on. For me, it was exciting that they were showing interest in our project, and it felt like an opportunity. I eagerly fulfilled each request. I was determined not to let Michelle's hard work go to waste. That was my only focus. After I finished the explanation, I muted my microphone for the moment. It seemed the other side was going to discuss things among their team. Timothy, thank you so much. Michelle bowed her head to me. No, no, Michelle, you've worked so hard up to this point. I had to do my part. You, you can speak English? Harvey asked, tilting his head in confusion. He only mentioned English. Had he not realized I had been speaking other languages too? Yes, well. I attended university abroad. Abroad? Where exactly? Cambridge. Yes, I had studied at the University of Cambridge, specifically in a language course. I learned not just English but various languages, including those not widely used anymore, along with their historical and cultural contexts. But that very fact became a burden for me later. Once people knew I had attended such a prestigious university, they began to put pressure on me. You're from Cambridge, so you can handle this, right? Cambridge isn't all it's cracked up to be, huh? Before I knew it, my evaluations became dominated by the university name rather than my actual performance. Eventually, I started feeling constant pressure in everything I did. What if I failed? Would people say, even someone from Cambridge can't do this? At some point, I stopped mentioning Cambridge altogether. I realized that if people thought I was just an average or even below average worker, no one would expect too much from me. I concluded that hiding my background was the best way to avoid excessive expectations. I was running away from myself, afraid of disappointing others. But now, that very knowledge was helping Michelle and the company. Harvey, with his incredulous voice, clearly hadn't known about my academic background. Cambridge. I had no idea. You, of all people. You're lying. And yet, it was that incompetent person who just saved your presentation, wasn't it? I found myself finally able to speak my mind to Harvey. In the past, I would have bitten my tongue out of deference to him as my boss. But seeing how he pushed his responsibilities onto his subordinates, I had lost all respect for him. What did you just say? Sorry to keep you waiting. Harvey's face grew tense, and he looked like he was about to say something. But Michael's voice coming through the computer stopped him in his tracks. Timothy, your explanation was excellent. The schedule and costs are all very reasonable. Plus, we'd love to meet the Japanese fans of our game. I'd like to move forward with this. Thank you so much. So, should we continue the discussion with you? Are you the head of sales? Oh, no. I'd prefer if Mr. Yates or the appropriate department head could take over. I'm just a regular employee and don't have the authority. What? You're just an employee? You've got to be kidding. It seemed he was genuinely surprised, not just flattering me. Then why were you the one presenting? Where's your leader? I glanced at Harvey. He still seemed lost, unable to follow the conversation. That man you saw earlier, Harvey, is our leader. He can't speak English. So he tried to shift the responsibility onto his subordinates to avoid blame. Realizing he had been mentioned by name, Harvey straightened up, sensing that the conversation had turned to him. He's someone who shifts his failures onto his subordinates and takes credit only for the good parts. 
I couldn't stand to watch it anymore, so. Despite being just a regular employee, I took it upon myself to explain things to you all. Even after hearing my saying, Harvey continued to laugh nervously, clearly unaware of what was being said about him. He didn't seem to realize the gravity of the situation at all. Is this the kind of person involved in the project? That's a problem. Let's make removing him from the project a condition for moving forward with this deal. A few of our employees who understood English chuckled softly at this suggestion. As usual, Harvey had no idea what was going on. I understand. I'll relay this to management. Would it be all right if we give you a response at a later date? Of course. By the way, it's rare to find someone like you who can communicate with so many people. This might not be the best place to bring it up. But how would you like to work for our company? We could meet your salary expectations. Wait, what? Oh, um, I'm serious. It's not just a lip service. If you're interested, we'd love to have you on board. It was a generous offer, but I wasn't mentally prepared for something like this. I needed some time to think it over. Thank you very much. I'll need a little time to consider it. After that exchange, the meeting finally came to an end. Timothy, what happened during that call? And what about your disrespectful attitude earlier? Excuse me, but may I go check on Mr. Yates at the hospital? Michelle cut Harvey off and began gathering her things, clearly getting ready to leave. Even if her request was denied, it looked like she was ready to bolt out of the meeting room at any moment. It was clear that she was deeply concerned about Mr. Yates. Michelle, I'll drive you. Harvey, our client is interested in moving forward and will report the details in the minutes. Ignoring whatever Harvey was muttering, we quickly left the meeting room. For some reason, Michelle already knew the location of the hospital and even which room Mr. Yates was in. As we hurried down the hospital hallway, I heard a familiar voice coming from our destination. It was Harvey. Had he really taken a taxi or something to get here ahead of us? And so, the negotiations are going well. The only unfortunate thing is, when I try to explain in place of Mr. Yates, my subordinate, Timothy, overstepped and took over the presentation without permission. I couldn't believe my ears. Shaking my head in disbelief at how easily he could tell such blatant lies, I walked into the room, feeling utterly exasperated. Excuse me. Oh, you both came. Sorry for putting you through all this trouble. It's no trouble at all. More importantly, how are you feeling? I'm feeling much better. The IV is done, and, well, they've put me in a rather over-the-top room. But I should be discharged by tomorrow. So there's no need to worry. That's a relief. Michelle collapsed into a nearby chair, her body going limp. It seemed the relief had completely drained her strength. By the way, Harvey was just telling me about the negotiations. Harvey gave us a smug look, confident that we wouldn't dare contradict him. He must have thought his version of events would be believed. How much of it was a lie? The piercing question made the room fall silent. Harvey turned to Mr. Yates with a look of fear on his face. Mr. Yates? What do you mean by lie? I just can't picture you as the type to act so decisively in that situation. What do you think, Michelle? Mr. Yates shifted his gaze to Michelle, who was still seated. Michelle stood up and walked over to stand beside Harvey. It's true that the negotiations were mostly successful. However, all of the explaining was done by Timothy. The entire meeting was recorded. So you can review it if you'd like. 
M. Michelle, what are you saying? Harvey, is what she said true? Given what I've heard about your behavior, it's not exactly hard to believe. What, what do you mean by my behavior? Your behavior and attitude were being reported to me daily, said Mr. Yates. Harvey, still oblivious, didn't seem to grasp the meaning of the words. Meanwhile, I realized something. Mr. Yates, could it be? My words seemed to make Harvey realize what was happening. He muttered, no way. Under his breath. My daughter has been telling me about the things you said. It seems you've been quite harsh with her. Daughter. You mean? Yes, Michelle is my daughter. I know she's a bit shy and inexperienced, which made me worry about her future as a professional. I allowed her to be transferred to various departments, thinking it would help her gain experience. But I never expected she'd have a boss who would call her useless and dump all the menial tasks on her. I was planning to take action soon. But now's the perfect time. I think a demotion is in order for you. Wait, please. This has to be a mistake. A mistake? Hardly. I even had Michelle carry a voice recorder. I'm fully aware of your behavior. Consider yourself lucky I'm not announcing your demotion in front of everyone. Damn it. You set me up. Harvey shouted angrily, his fists clenched, but his outburst drew the attention of nurses and security guards. With no options left, Harvey stormed out of the room, practically running away. Timothy, thank you so much for everything. And not just this time, thank you for giving Michelle the opportunity to grow. Before she started working with you, she had no confidence in herself. But whenever she talks about working with you, she seems so happy. Dad, stop it. Michelle, embarrassed by her father's praise, protested. It was clear they were just a close, loving family. I watched the two of them with a smile. On the way home from the hospital, Michelle bowed apologetically. I'm sorry for not telling you about my father. You don't need to apologize. I had my own secret, too. I wondered if Michelle had kept her connection to Mr. Yates hidden for the same reason I had kept my background a secret. Did you hide it because of the pressure? Yes. I thought if people knew I was Mr. Yates's daughter, they'd have high expectations of me. And when I realized I wasn't capable of living up to those expectations, I lost confidence in myself. So that's why you started doubting yourself. Yes. No matter how hard I tried, if I didn't see results, I'd feel disappointed in myself. I kept thinking that as Mr. Yates's daughter, failure wasn't an option. I understand. I went through the same thing. But Michelle, you're incredibly talented, so there's no need to feel that pressure anymore. Thank you, Timothy. It's all thanks to you, um. Michelle hesitated, as if struggling to find the right words. About that headhunting offer earlier, what are you going to do? Oh. Well. I'm not opposed to working overseas, but I'll need to give it some serious thought. I? Hmm. No, never mind. If there's something you want to say, don't hold back. I'd really like to keep working with you, Timothy. But it's your life, so please don't feel pressured by me. Thank you. It means a lot to me that you said that. To be honest, I'd never really felt needed by anyone before. So hearing that from Michelle was truly touching. You're right. I need to carefully think about what's best for my life. By the way, if you're not satisfied with your current position or salary, I have an idea. An idea? A few days later, 
we received official confirmation that the deal had been successfully closed. And, of course, it came with the news of Harvey's dismissal. It turned out that Harvey's numerous verbal abuses and failures to fulfill his duties as a supervisor had come to light. And instead of a simple demotion, he was reassigned to a low-ranking position at the store with the worst sales, tasked with menial work. I hope that by experiencing the tasks we used to do, he'll gain some empathy for others. I also heard that he's now required to attend regular English training sessions, Having language skills is always beneficial, so I hope he makes the most of it. As for me, I was promoted to project leader, taking over Harvey's role. It turned out that Michelle's good idea had been this all along. None of the team members had any objections to my explanation. On the contrary, they praised my actions and regretted how they had treated me before. The same went for Michelle, everyone admired how she supported me so effectively while the others were at a loss for what to do. Now, I'm the project leader, and Michelle serves as my second in command. I turned down the headhunting offer, but we maintained a good relationship with them, and the work continues smoothly. Michelle also decided to reveal that she is Mr. Yates's daughter. At the same time, she expressed her desire not to receive any special treatment and her determination to handle the pressure on her own. Before we knew it, people started teasing us, saying we made a great couple. We often get playful remarks when we're together. Well, since we are actually a couple, it doesn't bother me much, but it's a bit embarrassing, especially before meetings. Having gone through similar struggles, Michelle and I developed a strong bond as we faced challenges together. I'm truly grateful to Michelle for being my partner both in work and in life. Mr. Yates occasionally visits the store, and his usual line is, Michelle's been talking about you all the time lately. Which never fails to make Michelle upset, it's become our little tradition. Being with Michelle has made me realize how important it is to have an environment where you can use your abilities without worrying about how others perceive you. Sure, high expectations can be intimidating, but it's a shame not to use the skills you've worked hard to gain. Besides, I've learned that the more you use your abilities, the more you grow. If fear holds you back, the best way to overcome it is to use your strengths and sharpen your skills. I always tell the people I work with that. I want to help build a workplace where everyone can be themselves.